I, we're on to our final speaker today. It's pretty epic. Um, our, 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 our guests are our finale for today. It's, it's an amazing designer and friend of mine and who's, who's, who's I've known for many years, actually. So I've known Jess from I and Me. Well, I think we met Jess, what, what in a photo shoot of Amy, Amy Leverton's. That's probably where we first met, probably on the oh, South Bank. Yeah. And we're, Jess, Jess looks amazing. If you find this old video, it's from the Kingpin show and Jess is talking. It's one of the first videos uh, that probably Amy Leverton did. It's one, yeah. of those, one of those denim short ones, but it's, Jess is one of the first ones. And she looked u- uber cool then in a selvage, yeah. selvage, selvage denim from like, from like Japan and epic, epic. But yeah, um, we've got you for about 20 odd minutes or so and I'm going to be asking you some questions. So welcome, first, first of all. Thank you so much for your time. Um, so yeah, so Jess has got an amazing sustainable denim brand called I and Me. Um, been following it for years and years. It pretty much started roughly the same time I started my own brand, Endrime. So, but she's always done amazing salvage garments and um, really always about clean construction. Really doesn't believes in a lot of the things we all believe in as believe in as well. And likes to likes to show off a couple of salvage lines every now and again, but does it in a really classy way. So yeah. Anyway, I'm just going to go straight into it because we've got a lot of students here who might want to know, and I want to get to the Q and A. That's the important thing. So if you guys have got any questions please write, 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 write them in and we'll, de- we'll definitely get to, get to them at the end. Um, what career path did you take at college and like university? Um, first, I just want to say thanks to Ravensbourne and Kingpins for having me um, involved in this event. Um, I've known Ravensbourne for years and years. I've done maybe four or five years of um, various work with them. So, and obviously with you, Mustin as well. Um, so yeah, hi to everyone and thank you for getting me involved. Um, so yeah, my career path, um, didn't start in fashion actually. I did an AVC in art and design, um, which is an equivalent of A levels, and then A level photography as well. Um, and that was back in Surrey, back where I grew up. And then I went to the AIB in Bournemouth, um, which is the Arts Institute, and I did a graphic design degree there. Um, so quite a different kind of education in terms of where I've ended up. Um, but my heart was always with, in fashion, so I kind of knew that I needed to get as much experience as I possibly could. Um, so I moved up to London and did a year of free work experience in various fashion companies. Um, so that included Miss 60 and the press team. So my first kind of look into the world of denim, I guess, many years ago. Um, then I went to Days of Confused in the editorial department, worked with Katie Shillingford and Karen Langley there, which was amazing because that was kind of shooting on, on uh, um, doing shoots for the actual magazine. Um, so I shot with Rankin once and um, yeah, that was really, really creative and great. Um, and then I moved to Topshop um, to the press team for a couple of weeks and then went on to the buying side, which is I randomly was put on the den department there um, and had, had a special relationship with the fabric and just fell in love with it and got offered a job. Um, so I was there at Topshop for around six, seven years um, as a, on the denim department. Um, so yeah, that was a great kind of education into my first kind of um, product development role, I guess. So yeah. I think it, it, you can tell you've got a graphic background because your visuals, mm-hmm. your photography, so strong. Like, you know, all your photo shoots, when they, when they do appear, <laughs> I think you shared one of your the lookbook photo shoots in a group that I'm in and we all freaked out because it was so cool. <laughs> So it's such a breath of fresh air and you know and um yeah you can tell you've got that you're part of that generation that crew you know actually working at days and all the rest of it it's definitely yeah. you know, definitely influenced not influence, it's definitely shaped you for sure those kind of things <laughs> in the work that you're doing um yeah. who, who who inspired you in the early part of your career obviously you just said you've worked at days so you yeah. met some amazing photographers and stylists and whatever so yeah um, yeah well, I think back then, like there was a huge magazine culture. Um, obviously, everything's a lot more digital now, but I was obsessed with magazines, even from an early age, like growing up in the countryside. My first kind of um, relationship with the fashion industry was buying um, magazines like The Face and ID and Days every month. And that was, you know, I just fell in love with it there. So it was, yeah, very visual, like a lot of image. Um, it's always been something I've been really kind of passionate about. And I think that was a big influence on me, um, particularly in college and uni. And then I guess when first starting in my actual job roles, um, I was living in London, a lot more youthful and had a lot more energy. And obviously it's an amazing city and going out, going to gigs, um, just just the whole street style thing like that. That was all kind of my inspiration when I was, yeah, that kind of age. Definitely just just my surroundings. Okay, nice, nice, nice. Um, 
Can you pinpoint moments in your career that have influenced you, that have created your brand and your ethos like today? It's also your... Yes, so I am as a um, unisex denim brand, like we're quite lifestyle focused as well. We do a lot of collaborations, lifestyle based. Um, we have a big sustainable focus. Our statement is slow runs, um, small runs, slowly made, sustainably sourced. So um, those are the kind of three, the three kind of pillars that we work to. Um, and I think the moment that my mind kind of changed into that way of thinking and consuming myself was I guess I'd, I'd worked in the industry six, seven years and was almost feeling a little bit um, deflated by the way it was going, like the relentless cycle of um, the turnover of stock, um, just kind of understanding how a product is made from beginning to end. So even from, you know, the growing of the cotton to the concept stage to um, sampling like even that stage is the amount of hands it's gone through the amount of resources it's used even before you book the the garment for production is ridiculous you know um so then you book the garment and then everything's produced in huge quantities and then you ship it across the world and it comes into store but not necessarily the shelf life can you know be a couple of weeks sometimes oh it's not even it's shipped at all and it, all the seasons are out of whack as well like you know yeah exactly you know. You know, exactly. I've, I've thought of going. I've been seasonless for a couple of years now, and because it just doesn't make any sense for how I. Yeah. Been it. Exactly. Yeah. Like bringing in um, autumn coats in July, August. I mean, it just doesn't make sense, and that that kind of just seeing all the stocks at about like customers not being able, being able to sit for a couple of weeks and then disappearing into markdown and then just disappearing from the face of the earth. Like the whole cycle just was making me really anxious. Um, but also general London life was making me really anxious at the time. I think I was feeling very um, overwhelmed by the busyness of the city. So we moved, me and my husband actually moved out of London similar time to when I launched the brand, um, just for a slower pace of life. And I think that my, just my mentality had changed um, in my career and, and in my life really. So yeah, um, the brand is all about kind of seasonless, um, trendless model um so it's all about wardrobe staples really beautiful premium fabrics uh, very well made it's all about longevity and we want people to love the garments forever um you know it's a real um something that's a real pleasure to have in your wardrobe that you can rely on and it's yeah just the perfect pieces really yeah no i really admire what you're doing because obviously it's 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 well made product it's clean it's not you know it's not it's not trend driven, like zippers and crap all over it. It's stuff that you can easily pair with a vintage piece. Or look really yeah. Cool. So, yeah, these well-made things are definitely in, it's gone full circle now. Everyone's thinking, oh, let's make well-made products. I'm like, we've been yeah. doing this for a while already. Yeah, <laughs> Just, you know, so yeah. I mean, when I launched, I, I was, you know, not, not many people were talking about it and it was quite confusing to people. A seasonless, like, what's, what does seasonless mean? Like, especially stockist, it was, took them a while to, um, get their head around it but it, it works well now the model's great because people can buy get back into stock because i hold stock and you know they can uh style it with any other, other any other collection that they have so amazing yeah. stuff I've, I've, already, I've already touched on this question but i'll ask it in a slightly different way oh uh, your marketing and imagery you use are so nice how important is telling that story each season Really important, as I kind of said, I'm, I'm an image person, like I love it. Um, I guess not having a shop myself, I, we launched as a direct consumer brand. So we were originally just online. Um, we soon were getting contacted by stockists wanting to stock us. And so we do have a number of stockists around 10, 10 now, I think. Um, uh, so often the first touch point for customers is online. So via our website or um, Instagram. So having beautiful content that can represent the product before a customer might even see or feel the actual garment is really important. Um, and for me, it's a real pleasure to do it and produce a lookbook. Like I find it one of the best things to do alongside the product development of the actual pieces. So um, I'm constantly looking for people to collaborate with, like always kind of trying to find up and coming photographers or models um people that can represent the brand because they will then become you know the face of the brand um so yeah it's it's great we and love also i think like when i'm designing a collection or a range um i'm already thinking ahead to the lookbook and how it's going to look so i almost design in looks 
Mm. Like I do a lot of co-ward dressing. There's often like a top and a bottom to, to look together and it's almost a bit of a signature brand element now. Um, so I, yeah, I'll design the range with the images in mind. Like how is it going to look as a package? Like how, how can that collection come together as a story? Not only from product, but as, as a concept. So yeah. yeah. A lot of the time, very similar actually, we, we design, me and Sadi design loads, loads of garments for loads of people and often it's a mood image or it could be a place in a city or it could be even an environmental landscape for that, you know, and then we design in looks as well. I, I find designing yeah. looks a lot more easier now rather than designing separate pieces. I have to think of it as an out outfit Then I know. Yeah. Um, moving on, moving on, um, your lookbooks are a dream each season. What's the process you go through? I think you've maybe answered this question already to create your lookbook shoot. So again, it's collaborating with loads of different people. Every season is different, of course. You try and mix, you try, yeah. try and mix that, right? Yeah, yeah. Um, because we are seasonless, I don't, I don't ever call it collection spring, summer, autumn, winter. They're very much built around a story or a feeling. Mm. Um, so that's kind of influences heavily, obviously, what the lookbooks are gonna look like or any content. Um, yeah, it's just, uh, finding the right people that can represent the brand best for you, I guess. And or I'm constantly looking for people to work with. Yeah. Um, it's, it's, it never stops. And even if I mit, skip, um, like a collection, like we just, me and my husband just recently had a baby, like, so I skipped releasing something and which is great because the brand, it can do that. Um, it's just, you know, having, working on something, for maybe 18 months to two years and like it's a real slow process it's about um taking our time with it and making sure that it's right and not rushing it and yeah just constantly evolving the stories and that kind I of thing really, i really enjoy working with a couple of different photographers and also stylists but we also have the same stylist always so the same sort of yeah. look, but we mix up locations but i love, love shooting outside like natural yeah. light always better always oh, natural light, yeah and on film as well, all my lookbooks have been shot on film, which is always a bit, bit risky, but it almost makes it more exciting because you're like, ah, does it come out? <laughs> I know, it's good. Have you got the shot? You just don't know really half the time. Well, you, exactly. well, you, know, yeah. um, you use a lot of, lot of salvage in like I'm mean, even your first collection, I remember you use salvage and you're still using it now. Is there yeah. a dream salvage compu composition that you wish you could include in the, f in, in the future? or if you're using now that you're really, really content with? Um, I, yeah, I love salvage denim. I've always been drawn to it for two reasons, I think. Obviously, the durability and premium quality of a salvage denim, um, but also just the creative abilities of just having the salvage. So um, obviously, we know it as an outseam one on a jean, but you can use it in all sorts of places. You know, you can get really creative with it, and I think that always adds an extra nice design element to a piece. Um, so my dream for salvage actually is coming out soon. Um, it's a plant dyed stripe. You might have seen it. it's in the new lookbook. Um, it's an Indian fabric on, uh, woven on a power loom. Um, it took three to four months just to dye and make. Um, so yeah, again, a really, really slow process. Um, so some of the com um, things that have been used to dye in uh, indigo, madder, um, pomegranate, there's nuts, um, it's all sorts of different beautiful kind of organic um, elements natural, to it. Natural is sort of inconsistencies through it, so it looks beautiful yeah, even, even exactly. without a wash. So with a wash it's yeah. going to be amazing as well, right? So with a rinse. Well, I'm, I'm keeping it raw, but um, yeah, it's just the colours are, are really beautiful. And they've come out slightly different to the sampling because obviously you're, you're working with natural elements and you can't quite control it. Um, but they're still, I mean, yeah, it's absolutely stunning. It's really yeah. beautiful, really excited about uh, it. Is there a brand or company that you wish you, you could you could you could collaborate with? Obviously, I know you collaborate with lots of different stylists and, and photographers, but is there a brand you would love to collaborate with? Um, I've done some of my hair. Might be the same ethos or someone that you respect. Yeah, yeah. Um, well, I, I've worked with loads of people, like even uh, furniture designers, ceramicists, um, videographers, illustrators. So it, it's quite a rounded. Um, like history we have with collaboration. But I was thinking about who my dream person would be and it, it's a long shot and actually couldn't happen now because he unfortunately passed away recently. Oh. But Terence Conran, mm. um, he has a really beautiful, there's a beautiful quote of, that he, um, when he talks about his product and it's all about to grow old gracefully and slip seamlessly into people's lives and give them years of pleasure. And I just think that that is exactly what IME is about. 
Um, it's all about slipping into people's wardrobes and, um, you know, something that you're going to love and last forever. And I just think that's such a nice sentiment, especially now and what we've all been going through in the last year or so. And yeah. I think, no, that's from yeah. Saudi. It's what's one of Saudi's favorite um, designers. She's got a lot of his books from the 80s as well. She's amazing. She's sold, yeah. she's sold from her parents. He goes, I'm taking that. So it's yeah. quite funny. He's old parents. If you think about yeah, what he's done with a design museum and habitat and, you know, just that very simple, under, understated, beautiful design. And it's, yeah, it's okay. great. Um, one more thing, I skipped this question by, by mistake. Um, you must have a great archive of, of like garments. Uh, is there a favorite piece? Because I know you collect, you travel just like us. You travel a lot, especially when you're a buyer in your previous life and even now. Mm. Is there a couple of pieces that you always go back to that you're like, this is still and still and still amazing to look at or it inspires a wash or inspires a pocket pocket detail? There's, um, yeah, I mean, I do. I'm, I've been really fortunate to travel the world and um, picked up some amazing pieces. Um, quite often they end up on our walls in our house or the studio just looking at them you know they almost are like art relics um i've written yeah i'm really drawn to like some bleached things i just love that kind of contrast of if it's denim or jersey or whatever like the sun folds from sun bleached um areas um but one piece it because uh, these are hanging in our house at the moment i wanted to show you um but it's a little kid souvenir jacket Nice. A denim piece, but um, I got it in Osaka actually, but it's a Korean thing. Um, and yeah, I just think it's super sweet. Um, love the colours. Um, and kids wear it is something I want to look at in, for I and Me um, in the future. And obviously, I have a little baby that might fit into it one day, so it's even better. So um, yeah, that's one of my special pieces at the moment. <laughs> well, that's cool. Um, I know you're on the lookout for like sustainable solutions and mill partners. Is there um, is there anything that that excites you at the sort of at the moment? You know, especially when how your business is like heading. Um, especially I mean, in regards to like sustainability, is there anything that you're thinking? Okay, in the next few years, I'm going to go towards this a bit, a bit more. I'm going to look at my packaging. Mm -hmm. that, some of the places yeah. I'm at the moment. Anything you would like to tell us more? Yeah, about? I'm always trying to improve um, my impact and what we're how we're doing everything you know from start to finish really looking at it from a design point of view but also as um a brand and how we can use our voice um so yeah again with like packaging looking at biodegradable bags um there is an element of restriction with a small brand you know you come across the problem of small moqs and various things so it's not easy to just like switch on to something new um but um, we've recently gone onto Jacron patches, so there's every time we do something new, we're always looking at kind of bettering our impact. Um, and I definitely think since the lockdown, my head personally and from a business sense has looked a lot more as to lifestyle as influence. We're spending a lot more time at home, um, and that's not going away anytime soon. So I'm, I'm yeah looking to kind of focus more into lifestyle products where I've done that before. So yeah, looking at new collaborations and some more kind of work from home-esque nice. element yeah nice. okay got some fun questions now um when you design a jean do you start from at the front or the back and i start sometimes with the yoke or the back pocket or the top that's when i start where do you start when you when you design a jean? i always start with the silhouettes like the pattern and fit for me is always the most important thing um i just think a really strong silhouette is um really like for me the most important thing that's what i look for when i'm wanting to shop for myself in a jean and what i want to give my customers some like some real strong silhouettes so yeah pattern and fit are my starting um, point quick fire questions um cotton or polyester thread i'm actually looking to um work with some tensile threads going forward so i'd say that <laughs> that's a good answer it wasn't a trick wasn't it wasn't a trick 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 question um <laughs> One cm selvage side seam or 0 0.6? This is a very geeky thing I'm asking. I mean, both are great. <laughs> There's not much difference in it, obviously, but um, I guess probably a 0 0.6 yeah, if I had to pick. But, okay, <laughs> this, this, is, this is a trick question. Tencel or hemp? Yeah, that's a hard question. Um, I've seen some hemp panels that I'm looking at to work with in the future, so I'd say hemp at the moment. Yeah, nice. Um, red cast or green cast? That's a really hard one. Um, I use both very often in my collections. Um, in the latest collection, I've got red cast and green cast. Um, I almost feel that red 
um, green cast feels more modern to me. Yeah. Um, so I say green cast at the moment. I'm That's what I'm wearing green. at the moment, yeah. yeah. I love green. Um, right hand twirl or left hand twirl? <sighs> I mean, I love both. Again, they're both in my new collection. Um, left hand's lovely for the drapiness and that kind of thing, but I think right hand for me for the authentic kind of. Yeah. You know. Nice. Um, you're, I'm sure you've been to the places. Um, Osaka or Tokyo? Oh, I've have been to both. Luckily, I've been very fortunate to have been to both a few times. Um, I feel like I can't really make a decision on that. They're both brilliant. Osaka's like almost a small version of Tokyo. Yeah. Um, yeah, it's yeah, both. It I can't pick. Person? Yeah, yeah. Anyway, yeah. so let's open it up. So <laughs> maybe we've got about five minutes or so before we end. So if there's any students who want to ask any questions for Jess, let's see if they've any come through. Uh, Gabby's saying hi, Jess. So that's cool. Gabby from Ray Ray. Um, what, what's the future of Iron Me looking like? Future plans to, ex to expand the brand? Well, you mentioned you're going to go into other kind of products, which is quite, quite, ex quite exciting. Possible kids, kids wear as well. Our yeah. friend like Rizwan is asking how many, oh, how has it been moving out of, of London? Have you, have you designed the brand? Would you still be in like London with the, with the, do you think your brand would be, oh yeah, you definitely, I think. I have a studio in London still, so I do travel into that. And I think it, is, it has been important for me to have um, that relationship still with the city. Um, it's obviously for stockists coming to visit, it really important for them to be able to have appointments there. But also I've opened studio up for customers to come and see as well. So um, that's been really nice to kind of have open the relationship up with customers. Um, yeah, it's important for me to have, have that opportunity definitely yeah, it's, it's a real luxury really to have a studio because it's um it's um mm -hmm. I, had a, I had a studio as well and it's always great because you've got a base where people can meet stylists can meet there you can yeah. set meetings there so yeah um rebecca's yeah. asking are there any goals you haven't achieved any milestones you want to reach in the next 10 years for your brand um i want to focus on or do some work on kind of working on reports and data um, kind of tracing my product back. I think it's a really important thing to do um, because the brand is basically just me. It's obviously hard for me to do everything, but it, it is a big goal of mine and something I want to start working on. Um, so yeah, that, that's a big important milestone, I think, for me. Like sort of like, sort of like blockchaining so people can go on your site and air, all yeah. the components are there. I'm exactly. Sure you can probably achieve that like next year, I'm sure. Yeah. All these yeah. things are available now. Um, so thank, yeah. you, thank you, Rebecca, for that question. Sherry's asking, I know your denim is such a labor intensive medium in apparel. What keeps it inquisitive, motivated and, and inspired? What, what keeps it fresh for you? I guess that's the, that's the question. Um, I think, well, traveling was such a big inspiration for me and that's what kept it fresh for me, getting different culture inspiration. Um, obviously that's not happening now. So I think, you know, we all as designers rely heavily on mills for inspiration as well. They really are such a big player in yeah. the whole process. Like, and that partnership is really, really important. Um, so I get really excited. Fabric is really excites me. Um, so when I see something I love like that, that will often start the whole process of the collection. And that's almost where I'll build the range from. So then I'll look at color palettes and then silhouettes from there. So yeah, fabric is a big, big inspiration for yeah, sure. I get inspired by fabric and I start sketching just based off of fabric. I think it's really odd when you start sketching without having a fabric in front of you because then you have to work backwards. So I'm, yeah, yeah. yeah I have fabric and then I move from there. Thank you, Sherry, yeah. for the answer. Uh, Kelly Harrington saying hello. Hi, Hi. Kelly. Um, Rebecca's asked another question. Is, is there any advice you can give for young designers at, in like sort of university when they're ready to start a sustainable brand? So yeah, any advice you can give? Just learn, 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 right? Just yeah, learn, get, get as much um, experience as you can. You know, I didn't have a fashion degree. I just got, I learned on the job in many different brilliant companies and I worked in different um, departments as well. So press, styling, buying, you know, all of this now I'm look, I can still relate to from yeah. those many years ago. It really did give me such a good insight into what a brand is and how it runs. Um, so yeah, just get experience, work with and collaborate with people, stay inspired. Um, and yeah, I think, think just getting experience is the main thing. And also learn your, um, 
customer base as much as you can like really try and find your niche and understand who your customer is who your customer base is um, right. I, I always tell students to I encourage them not to start a brand straight away I encourage them to go and work for someone for free don't yeah. don't ask for money straight away you can you know I got my first job because I, I interned there for free you know so I, yeah. I got an amazing job because I interned somewhere amazing so sometimes if you just go somewhere for a little while you 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 know you make your way there so it's quite important and yeah. make for mistakes sure. with other people's money that's what I always sort sure. of say yeah um, so like the same Rebecca who's asked three questions that says I'm ready to intern for you next year how amazing so Rebecca do oh, brilliant. give me an email drop me an email yeah. <laughs> i'm sure you can get the details off like gabby or like or like um but thank you so much i think that's it we've wrapped now oh sorry one more question's can't come in because of the pandemic so there's no more traveling where would you like to, to take inspiration at the moment this is the final question um i've started going to like antique markets mm. um in and around where i live in london just to get some inspiration um I find a lot of like vintage generally, I mean, not necessarily that they have clothes there, but just objects and um, looking at color inspiration and just anything like that. Just um, just finding, trying to find inspiration where I can't travel, just what, what is on my doorstep and what, what can I find really? Yeah. yeah no, I've been vintage shopping. We've been buying loads of furniture. So it was really strange. So loads of furniture has been popping up and, um, amazing stuff from the 40s and 30s that we've been picking up mm. like about just full of it we've got no room for it so like oh let's buy it like, <laughs> i don't need it but let's buy it um <laughs> we're done. and uh, yeah thank, thank you so much everyone's saying thank you jess you've been amazing thank you for your time thank you for doing this live as well it's always fun when it's live and uh you got to answer the questions live you're amazing as well and, and you're part of our little <laughs> denim pool in the uk and uh yeah. i wish you the absolute best in your brand and all the things going thank forward you. for the rest of the year and 2021 hope your family are well um, guys, this is it. This is wrapped for our second day. Um, absolutely amazing. I don't know if Andrew wants to pop, pop, pop back on. And um, that's it. So basically, let's talk about tomorrow before we finish. Tomorrow is epic, isn't it, Andrew? Tomorrow is epic. Um, we basically, we're going we're gonna to start with Marlene, our good friend Mar 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 Marlene, who was also in like the Kingpin Show Canada. So she's going to be talking about good research and, and like sort of gaining integration. We've got Sue Barrett, the awesome Sue Barrett is going to be talking about customer pro, customer pro, sort of profiling and, my, and mindsets. We've got epic Laura Dixon, amazing designer. She's going to be talking about how to design good tech packs. This is, this is some industry stuff that, you know, I know in all the jobs I've had, you know, I've seen other people's tech packs and I've been inspired by them. So it's good to, to see what good tech packs and bad tech, what tech packs look, look, look like. We've got, we've got the amazing Miles Johnson, joining us as well he's going to be talking about how how to make quality garments and what what, what it means to design quality quality good garments we've got like amazing graphic designer um nick williams who's released his book called denim branded like sort of like, together with like andrew and and, and, the, and the kingpin guys he's gonna be talking about sustainable branding and finishing and trims so it's going to be quite ex exciting we've got like leanne as well amazing denim designer leanne she's going to be talking about the different roles you can have in the industry. Not all of you are going to be not all of you are going to be designers. You're going to end up being photographers or stylists, or you're going to be writing copy or whatever it is. So you know she's going to be talking some of the things that you can end up doing, which is also cool. And we've got Amy Leverton, the amazing a Amy a Amy Leverton's going to be doing a little trend but present pre presentation for us. And then we're ending it with like Don Juan Harold as well, who's an amazing designer from the US. So tomorrow is just as epic as it has been for the last two days. Anything you want to add, Andrew? Um, I want to hear from the people in the audience if they have any suggestions. So we would like to know what we did wrong more than what we did right. Um, so if you have any suggestions to help us do a better job, we're going to be back in a year. I see, I'm assuming Ravensbourne will invite us back. So how can we be better and how can we serve the educational community more? So that's what I have to say. Um, we enjoyed today and hopefully you did too. I learned something. Absolutely right. It's been uh, a real pleasure. Thanks again to all the speakers. Uh, thanks to Ray. We got his name. We can never thank Joanne enough. So every single transformer oh, that's yeah. ever been done, anything that's ever been done, Joanne does it in Amsterdam from a little studio all by herself. That's and right. so kudos to her because she's just wickedly excellent. He is amazing. Always taking care of things. We're constant WhatsApp conversations. If you ever see me looking down, it's probably because I'm having a conversation with Joanne. So, you know, always in the background, there's something going on. Um, yeah. But thanks to Joanne, the ultimate producer. Absolutely. Ultimate. Thanks to Marzia as well. Thanks to Emily. Thanks to Sadia for the graphics. All these graphics that you see. There's people in the background that do all, all of this stuff. Um, and and you know, thank you for Andrew as well for letting us do this. It's been epic. Look out for the third day tomorrow. We start at 3 p.m. Central, like Euro European time. Really fun packed day. 
epic people like tomorrow. And um, that's it. So thank you for everyone involved. And I hope you enjoyed it. And see you again. See you again tomorrow. Cheers. Bye. Bye. Bye, everyone.